so often we stay away from the emotional piece around race and yet race is emotionally charged for people. We need to be able to deal with that. We need to acknowledge that it's there and then do the best we can with it. So tell us about that. M my question is, when was it not emotionally charged? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, uh, interestingly enough, I think there was a little bit of a, I think it's fair to characterize there having been a bit of a gender difference where the women mm. tended, so not to perpetuate a stereotype, <laughs> but sure. um, I think there was more emotional intensity and then a desire for emotional processing um, among the women. We were split half and half um, in the family, half women and half men. Mm. And the men, I think, were a little more eager to get to a kind of public policy type conversation. And I, boy, I honor both of those so deeply, the importance of both. So. Um, I would never say we need to do all emotional healing or all more rational, cognitive, policy, political um, type of work. I think they, they go hand in hand. And mm -hmm. I completely agree with you that we tend to underemphasize the importance of the emotional charge and the emotional healing needed. And I'll speak as a white person. Um, there's often a whole, there's a whole host of emotions that can come up for white folks and, and I've been on the road with the film for 11 years now so I've seen um, all kinds of responses and, and you know, you don't have to be a descendant of such an extreme family as mine to have charge around this so mm. white folks can have feelings of shame, guilt, desire to avoid shame and guilt which creates its own kind of response of defensiveness and pushback, even sometimes some anger with that, like, don't draw me into this, don't blame me, I didn't do it, or my people didn't do it. There's a real charge to that that kind of begs the question of like, why so much charge? 